continue our live coverage of DMG Maury's Technology Days here in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm joined by my friend Eddie from Noya Precision. Nice to meet you, Ian. Thanks for the introduction. Now, there. what brings you all the way out here? Because I believe you're not from Chicago. No, we're from uh, Colorado, Denver area, if you will. Actually, a, a pretty small town called Milliken. But yeah. And how long has Noya Precision been in business? Oh, we've been at it for about six years or so. It's a very small operation. Uh, we actually work out of our home. It's my wife and I, and uh, we had a larger business in the past, but this is uh, this venture is uh, about six years old. And when you say larger, do you mean? Uh, larger, uh, more than just my wife and I. Uh, we had around uh, 20 employees. We ran three shifts, uh, a larger OE production operation. And so now it's just the two of you running this operation? Yeah, now we have a very small uh, job shop, a, a more intimate uh, setting with our customers where you know we deal directly with our customers they're dealing directly with the folks that are actually making their parts and uh, so we tailor to kind of a niche uh, market that could really uh, benefit from that and what market is it what kind of industries are you doing work for well, you know mostly defense uh, we have three defense customers uh, that's a big part of it we do some third tier aerospace but uh, yeah that's what that's what keeps us busy and so if I'm interpreting what you're saying correctly you have a DMG at your house. Yep, in our garage. Yeah, we have a monoblock, which looks a lot bigger in our garage, but... Um, oh, it's literally one of these ones here. Yeah, it's that machine in our garage, and uh, it's been awesome. It's been absolutely awesome addition to, you know, just being my wife and I, we're always looking for ways to leverage our time, um, and technology like this and machines like this have certainly done that for us. It's just allowed us to leverage our time and give us access to some really good work. And of course, when it's just two of you, I take it you guys are looking to get as much automation and as much cycle time out of it as possible. Yeah, we're looking for that spindle to run as much as possible and, and naturally to uh, bring as much value as it can for our hour. And uh, this machine has certainly done that for us. And what kind of cycle times are you guys talking about typically? Are you, you getting know, out of it? We're all over the place. Uh, there's some short ones, but we're always looking for the long production runs of you know two hour, three hour cycle times. And in those cases, we may run those parts through the night. You know, we'll go out there in the middle of the night and run parts. And, and what kind of drove you towards doing something like a large machine like this, as opposed to maybe having two smaller machines? What was the thought process behind that? Interesting, that's a good question. You know, when uh, I sold my previous business and started this venture, we started with a single vertical machine at home, just a very small, in innocent operation. And it was great, we did very well. And uh, so things were going so good, we bought a second vertical and pretty much doubled our revenue, and it was great. My wife got involved, she's helping out, we're doing great. We added a third vertical, well, we didn't triple our revenue. At that point, it became hard to chase the spindles, and you realize you hit a wall where you can't just add machines without adding people to run those machines. So we kind of took a step back, we got rid of a vertical, we brought in the five axis, and now we've like, you know, our, our revenue is like 500% more than what it initially was. Right. Just because of the work type of work we have access to and uh, the efficiency of the five axis, really. You guys are essentially, instead of competing for lower quality work and doing more of it, it allows you to chase better paying work, better customers that you couldn't get with those smaller machines. Exactly. I think it's a good fit for us with our skill level, where we're at, uh, limited human resources to just focus on that machine tool that could leverage your time as much as possible. And do you guys do, because when we were at uh, Emo in Germany, we saw a lot of programming being done off solids for the five axis right in the controller. Is that something you do a lot of, or do you tend to use a CAM uh, system? Well, we do a lot on the CAM system, but I will say Siemens is extremely friendly with their CAM cycles and um, very intuitive, and so even if you are doing everything on your CAM program, if you bring it over to the control, it's very easy to open up a CAM cycle and, and uh, very intuitive work through it. There. There's some features on some of the DMG machines that are uh, proprietary to their machines and their controls, and so they're kind of macro driven, and you could do that on the control, but we're primarily on the CAM system. And when it comes to the machines you've seen here today, what's really catching your attention? What's getting exciting for you out here? Uh, we toy around with the idea of adding a uh, lathe capability, so the CLX, uh, which is a B-axis machine, is uh, something we're interested in, but honestly, the monoblock has been so good for us, we, we wouldn't mind just adding a second one with automation. Do you have the room for a second one? We do. And if not, Fairly. you'll make some. Yeah, we, we got to figure it out. 
Well, Eddie, thank you very much for joining us today. And if we want to find out more about Nueva Precision, where should we go? Oh, NuevaPrecision.com, and we're also on Instagram, uh, Nueva Precision. Thank you very much for joining awesome. us.